What is up, y'all? This is Andy with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. Today, I just wanted to share with you a really easy way to use some photography and turn that photography into a graphic that is vector. So we're going to be first working in Photoshop, turning our photography into a graphic, copy and pasting, and putting that into Illustrator, and then letting Illustrator do its thing and vectorize that graphic so that you're now able to give it to your client and they can blow that graphic up as big as they want without losing resolution. <laughs> what? All right, y'all. So I just got done scouring one of my favorite stock photography websites, Envato.com, which I should mention has a very affordable membership plan of around 200 bucks a year or 16 bucks monthly. And with that membership, you get unlimited downloads of licensed photography, fonts, video, sounds, you name it, they got it. So I would highly recommend you check them out and try to use our link below because that's an affiliate link and we get a little something for sending them business. Now back to our tutorial. As you can see, we have this adorable dog. The reason I chose this photo is number one, it's pretty much ready to go. It, I could see this as being a logo or being used somewhere else graphically on a flyer. The other reason is because the background's white, so it's gonna be easy to mask this, but I don't want you to feel like you ha only have to use photography with a white background. You can learn how to mask these out easily, and I have a video which I show you how to do so here. So check that out when you get a chance. Now, if you're using similar photography with a white background and you want to mask it out quickly, all you have to do is select this layer, go up to select, and then we're going to go to subject, and that's going to select our subject. And then we're going to go down here to the Japanese flag, hit that, and now we have a masked out image. Only other thing I'm going to recommend that we do now is while we're clicked on the mask, we're going to go back up to filter, we're going to go to other, and then we're going to go to minimum, and we're just going to shrink that outer edge a little bit by two pixels because later on we're going to actually add an outline to our image and if you don't do this it's going to look a little funky. Now let's go ahead and hit command J make a copy and then we can just go ahead and hide that bottom layer but on our copy layer let's go ahead and turn that into a smart object by right clicking and going to convert to smart object. Now what we need to do is pump up the shadows a little bit because otherwise we're going to lose them so you really want your if this is going to be a logo to be really contrasty but not so much with the shadows so we're just going to use that curves adjustment layer and then we're going to pump up the curve and then we're going to go to the mask and hit command i and then with your brush tool hit b we're just going to paint in painting with white we're just going to paint these shadows back in so anywhere where there's a deep shadow, we're just gonna be painting to try and even out our photo, something like that. Now with that layer selected and the bottom layer selected by hitting shift, we're gonna now hit right click and turn this whole thing into a smart object. Now that it's a smart object, we're gonna go ahead and hit command M and bring up our curves layer and just play around with the contrast. So we're just gonna add an S curve like so and then hit okay. The next thing we're gonna do is make one more copy by hitting Command J, and then we're gonna go up to Filter, and then on Filter, we're gonna go to Other, and then we're gonna go to High Pass. And this is just going to help us really, really create some more details in this photo. This is gonna sound a little crazy, but we're gonna go with 100 pixels, and then we're gonna go to Overlay. After now we have a highly detailed photograph that's ready to be turned into a graphic. So now we're gonna make one more smart object. So with that top layer selected, and then this bottom layer selected by hitting the Shift key, we're gonna right click and then go to convert to smart object. Now we can go up to filter and then on filter, we can go to filter gallery. And now that we're in filter gallery, we're gonna go to stamp. Now, if nothing shows up, you wanna make sure that this eyeball is selected, otherwise this filter won't work. Now that we're on the stamp filter, you can see we already have a really awesome graphic. From here, you can pretty much go ahead and play with the adjustments until you get something that looks decent. All right, so I have a light dark balance of six and then smoothness of three, and now I'm gonna hit okay. I totally forgot to ask, but if you guys are digging this video, can you just hit that like button right now? I really appreciate it. So now all we have to do is add that stroke. So to do so, we're just gonna double click on that layer, 
bring up our layer styles, and then we're gonna go to stroke. And then on stroke, you're gonna see that we can mess around with the sizing. You're gonna wanna make sure that the position is set to outside. And then once you're happy with your settings, hit okay. Now we have this awesome graphics that's ready to be vectorized. So now all we have to do is basically copy and paste this image into Adobe Illustrator. I'm gonna hit Command A to select all, and then I'm gonna hit Shift, Command C to copy, then I'm gonna go over to Illustrator, and here I'm gonna hit Shift, Command V, and like that, we're ready to vectorize. The easy part is getting the image to trace. If your image trace panel doesn't show up, just go to Windows, and then go down to Image Trace. If it has showed up, just click on our image one more time, and that'll select it. And from here, we're just gonna hit Trace on Image Trace and let Illustrator do its thing. On this little arrow, we can get to the advanced, and all the advanced is gonna do is allow us to kinda of tweak it a little more. So you can play around with the paths, the corners, and the noise. And one of the biggies is just making sure that we hit ignore white. And what that's gonna do is make all the white transparent. Now, if you don't wanna do that, that's fine too. So once you have it where you want it, the next part is to finalize everything, and that's by going to your properties panel and hitting expand. And that's going to convert everything into the vector. And as you can see, all the paths have been created. And if you click down over here, you can see hundreds of paths uh, <laughs> that have been uh, traced. And there you go, guys. That's pretty much how you turn a photograph into a vector object using Photoshop and Illustrator. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.